This is going to be a long video. Stick around. We get a little bit experimental. I haven't done a review in a while and I've been slowly gearing up my shop to sort of probably branch out more into the SMD rework and repair sort of uh, area. So I've got myself a new toy. Let's take a look at it. I purchased this on eBay. I was looking for hot plates for preheating. Yeah, PCBs, mainly with uh, surface mount devices to work in conjunction with, uh, I guess, a hot air station to help rework and repair uh, these sort of things. That's the puppy there. It's actually a 200 by 200 square hot plate. It's a huge plate for what I do, but I know you can get smaller ones and you can even get those little tiny mini ones, but I thought I could be branching out to other sort of aspects of my work that requires a heat hot, you know, hot plate like this. And uh, it appealed to me because it came with the computer controlled thermostat and having used this sort of uh, device in the past, I, um, I went for it because it's fairly stable and the PID thermostat controller or heater controller seems to be fairly bang on from an overshoot perspective. So if you want to program a uh, temperature in, that's pretty much what you'll get out the other side. So uh, fairly well packaged, $130 roughly uh, Australian. So who knows what that translates to in freedom units. But anyway, um, so far so good. Actually, at first glance, it looks uh, quite smart. Minimalist interface, which is perfect. Switch and your temp controller. Nice machine. You can see, look at that. That is a uh, super nice finish. It's definitely a milled finish, but, um, or machined finish, it is though. But, uh, oh, it's just so nice. Requisite uh, IEC kettle cord. Yeah, it's pretty light, so it's probably got the aluminium uh, conductors. Oh, I don't really want to cut it up to find out. Uh, but you can tell that this uh, power cord's not to code. If I could focus, here we go. See if that lets us focus. See those pins? Now you're supposed to have half of those pins insulated. So you don't get um, the little tiny fingers trying to put these plugs in and touching the pins and zapping yourself. So if you are familiar with the Aussie plugs, let me just find one. Here we go. Oh, this autofocus is shocking. I've done something to my settings. Anyway, bear with me. You can see that um, you know, when it focuses, oh my God. Any time now. I mean, you get the picture, sort of, although it's out of focus. Come on. Come on. And below, oh, there we go. So you can tell, eh? half that, the live and neutral pins. Yeah, that's, um, well, that's a no-no off the bat, not to code. I mean, I'd still use it, but um, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'll find another one. I've got the IEC cables at the wazoo. Uh, back to the unit. Uh, so, uh, ANSI, I guess, uh, 946C+. Plus. I don't know what the 946, well, I don't know what the plus is. Plus could be the, um, the plate size because there is one that has a, I guess you could say a 100 by 100 mil plate in the middle, uh, sort of in the middle, but the same sort of physical dimensions overall. Uh, on the back, well, the side we've got venting, a um, quality sticker by the look of it. On the back, IEC with a fusible, it's a fusible socket, which is handy. You don't have to go digging inside. Um, more venting on the other side. Four rubber feet on the bottom. So all in all, the, the finish of the steel work, because it's all steel, little spot welds there. It's sort of holding the, uh, the folded steel um, assembly together. And looks like a powder coated finish. That's um, not too bad at all. So on the face of it, what I'll do, I'll just give this hot plate a bit of IPA and wipe that over. Seems to have some fingerprints from the whoever assembled this. Oh, I just got a bit of, I've got a problem, OCD. 
And you can just hear that with those machining marks. See, no, there's no sound that way. And you've got radial machining marks if you go against the grain. <laughs> I'm impressed with the build quality so far. Should see how it performs. What we'll do, we'll do a couple of tests. It's supposed to be 850 watt or overall. So I'm, I'm assuming the plate's probably about 120 watts, 130 watts, who knows? This is only gonna be a couple of watts running that and the neon bulb behind that switch by the look of it. But um, there's not a lot to it. All right, let's plug it in and um, push some buttons and twiddle some knobs and see what happens. Actually, just before I do that, I've, I've turned autofocus off for the time being. So everything's manually focused. Uh, you can get these in the 110 and the 240 volt or 220 volt AC version. Um, the weight is supposed to be 4.9 kilos, so about five kilos. Whatever pounds that turns out to be. Was it about, um, I don't know, 10, 12 pounds? I don't know, around that mark. Uh, zero to 400, uh, yeah, start again. Uh, zero to 400 C on the hot plate. Shouldn't ever need that for a PCB. And like I said, 850 watts. You know, that doesn't really say if that's heating power or overall, but like I said, this is gonna take hardly anything. So most of it's gonna be heating power. Accuracy to plus minus one degree, degree C that is. Yeah, so very simple instruction manual. So far so good on the build quality. I guess we gotta see how it performs. So what we'll do, I'll get the old hoppy out and plug in some numbers and go from there. Okay, we're back. Uh, I forgot to mention that control panel is the REX or REX C100. I think these controllers are uh, fairly ubiquitous on the old eBay as well. So uh, BERM is the brand and the model number, like I said, REX C100. Fairly easy to use interface. So anyway, I've got the hoppy hooked up and we'll see how we go. So we'll just flick it on. Oh yeah, it goes for its startup sequence. Yeah, it's fairly, oh, what have we got there? 0.7 watts. Yeah, it's basically NAFOL on idle. And we can see that the set point or set value SV is 20 degrees. Okay, cool. That's no worries. And our PV, oh, what's PV mean? You got set value, P value. Far out, I've read a mental blank. Anyway, it's the current value, what it's reading off the hot plate. So the ambient temperature plus on the hot plate there is 24 degrees. So if I hold my hand on there long enough, is that gonna make much difference as the heat sinks through? Yeah, probably, look, 25, can we get to 26? Do, 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 do. And we have a wiener, come on. Yeah, I'm not gonna wait, make you wait for it to go to 20, 26. Anyway, it's got a, the heft in this, you can just feel it. There's quite a lot of thermal mass in this top plate as well. So chasing a certain temperature, or at least, you know, it's gonna hold heat for a fair bit. All right, let's turn it on. Let's set a value that's reasonably low that I could probably still touch. So I believe we press set. We'll move our cursor across to the next significant, oh geez, that was quick. If you don't hurry up and press a button, it, it um, goes back quite quickly. There we go. Let's go up to 50 degrees, something manageable. If we let it sit, okay, it stops. And do we see any action? Is it going to do anything for us? Actually, I think it has. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, 828. So, yeah, it's definitely 800 watts. It's not 850. And there's definitely not 20 watts going to the controller. Oh, look at that, it's turned off. It's already doing a um, PID program, I guess, so it doesn't overshoot. Let's just see if it overshoots. Okay, it stopped at 47. 46, okay, if it detects it dropping, does it pick it back up again? I wonder what the hysteresis is like. Oh, there we go. So we should settle it somewhere around 50. Maybe it might overshoot to 52 and come back to 50-ish. No, 53. Wow. That's actually impressive because three degrees is neither here or there. It's dropping. So that's already detected the um, temperature going to the hot plate 
and already detected that it could overshoot, backs off and then finds a happy medium. So it's definitely got a good PID uh, algorithm in there. I am super impressed. I wonder if that's going to translate all the way up the, uh, the heating range of this unit. Yeah, look at that. Sorry if I sound a bit nasal. It's overshot a little bit more. 54. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, that's not so bad. It's not like overshooting to 60 or 70 and then coming back down. So that's actually quite impressive. Okay, what I might do, uh, I don't... I was going to just check how evenly heated this top plate is. But there's no point throwing the thermal imager on it because this is so shiny. The emissivity is through the roof. Maybe I could paint, uh, put some engine black or something on top of the plate. But then again, I want to get it off later. I don't really want to paint it. I don't really want to stick tape on it either because it's not going to do it justice. All right. I'm just going to get my thermal camera and well, my thermal imager and go with that. It's it's going to completely fail on this surface, but can't hurt trying, I guess. I'll be back. Okay, we'll just fire up the imager. We'll let that do its thing because it's got to boot up and whatnot. So it's it's definitely holding the uh, the set value well pretty close within a couple of degrees, which is fine by me for at least its purpose anyway. Booting, booting, booting. This is going to be complete fail. Here we go. Yeah, look. You can see the hot plate's completely black. Yep, no good. I'm going to have to cover that with something. I'm just wondering if I can get away with, I don't know, a sheet of paper or something. Yeah. I'm not really looking for accuracy of the temperature because we know that's pretty close. What I'm looking for is the even, if the plate's evenly heated. Well, let's do that. Let's just put that on there. I might just get a bit of weight just to keep that paper down in the center. Right, the paper's heating nicely. Now, the paper's going to have little waves and whatnot throughout it, but it may affect my reading here oh and there you go it does mm, let's see that yeah it is yeah you can tell where the paper is not touching so if we put my finger on this section here and hold it down you can see how the i don't know if you can actually let me focus on there you know what this is a barbaric setup. Maybe what I should do is record the cap capture this because I've got software and screen record it and then play it back over. But at the moment, it's not really giving you much of an idea what's going on. I mean, I can push the paper down and I'm definitely getting hot spots. All right, I've completely failed. Here we are. I have to rethink my methodology when it comes to um, capturing temps. Let me just turn this off. There we go. Oh, by the way, this is the UTI. Um, <laughs> sounds like a plumbing infection. Uh, it's a UTI 6090B um, from Unity. It's supposed to be closely related to the 260. I don't know. It's got the same sort of specs, but I don't know why there's a 690. Um, I don't even think you can find the 690 on the UTI, uh, sorry, the UNIT website. It, it's beyond me. But anyway, quick overview. This has got um, minus 20 degrees C to 550 degrees C, to approximately 550 degrees C. And the resolution is uh, 256 by 192 pixels. So that's pretty good for a handhold unit. Um, I've only used it a handful of times and it's, it's brand new otherwise. I am super keen getting into more projects uh, and repairs that uses this. It's a bit of a cheating way to check out if you've got some components that are frying, you can't, you can't tell by looking at them. Um, other than doing the old 
touch and sizzle test. But um, this is going to come in handy for uh, future diagnosing. And I'm pretty keen to get stuck into that. What I'll do is I'll uh, hone my workflow. And I think we'll revisit this measuring um, hot plates and, you know, things that heat up a bit more effectively. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm fairly convinced that we've got a fairly even heat load over this hot plate. So that's, um, that's epically uh, pleasing for the price of this unit. So what I want to do now, I'm going to do a test. I've got a small, actually bear with me a sec. So I've had these little PCBs made up since forever. And all it is, is a rotary encoder with a Schmidt trigger um, and input and output, I guess. So basically it's just a rotary encoder with a sort of uh, integral Schmidt trigger and passives around it just to tidy up that signal. So what I might do is get the Schmidt trigger, which is a small um, uh, surface mount device, a couple of resistors, I believe, and um, solder paste, whack it on the hot plate and see if we can complete a solder cycle with this. I'm only going to guess the temperatures, so I'm going to probably put the hot plate to about 200 degrees and we'll focus right in on this with some decent lighting and uh, see if we can actually effectively solder this just by using the hot plate. Wouldn't that be epic? All right, I'll reconfigure and we'll come back. Well, there's so many variables. I'm trying a new solder paste um, and I've not used the hot plate for soldering before. And yeah, <laughs> it could all go really right or it could all go really wrong. I guess we'll find out. But you know what? It's only a small board, not much to lose. We'll go with that. I'm pretty excited. All right, I'll go and populate this, get the components on and we'll meet back here. Well, I'm so glad I didn't film that. You'd think I'd had early onset Parkinson's. Okay, so there's a few issues. My uh, resistor pads are way too big for the resistors I've got, but it should still work. And my application of the solder paste is of poor skill and I've probably put way too much on. But for the purpose of this uh, test and to see whether or not this works, uh, I can always clean up the solder afterwards if it is a bit too much. We'll set the hot plate to 200 degrees and we'll see what happens. <laughs> You'll guess as good as mine at this point. So this highlights the need for me to um, probably invest in a macro lens. I want to get closer than this, but that's about the extent. All right, uh, let's turn the unit on. You can see that the solder paste is sort of spread out and pulled with its next door neighbor, but yeah, whatever. We'll see how we go. And what we'll do, we'll set to 200. I think I really need 180, but we'll go to 200. And here we go. We're already at 50 degrees. I'm just gonna set up another camera. So we've got a different angle. Okay, here we go. So I've got another angle. I'm, I'm filming the front of the unit. I might cut to those scenes. But yeah, getting right in on our Soldering job there. I'm going to try and do this in real time. I'll try not to yabber too much. You can see that we're heating. Yeah, we've got 800 watts. We're at 90 degrees. So what I'll do, as soon as I detect or note the um, solder melting, or well, it's done its business, I'll just turn the unit off at the switch, at the main switch here and let it cool naturally um, rather than, you know, tweak the the controller itself. So we'll just hit 110, 111. Now I haven't really paid much attention to the specs of the solder paste I've used because it's the first time I'm using it. I should really consult the, the documentation, but here's what it is. I was going to probe the hot plate, but I don't think I need to. I'll tell you what I can do. Mm. Because the circuit board itself isn't uh, as emissive. Oh, we've got some smoke happening. Would I be able to capture the transition? Watching coat closely. Yeah, I've used way too much solder paste. I 
plenty of smoke going on. Thought it'd be about two minutes or so in since we've started. We're at 170 degrees. Okay, so we've had the unit shut down so as to not overshoot, which is great. It's back on again. Well, that's fantastic if that keeps that up. You what? I'm going to go and get my thermal camera. You keep an eye out for the transition. I bet you it happens when I'm not here. Right, here we go. I've just got my thermal camera on charge because it was sitting at a, about 50%. Still hasn't transit, no, no transition just yet. It's only 190. Sorry if I sound a bit off. I just got over a massive head cold. I'm still at 100%. I was gonna do this video a week or so earlier, but yeah, that didn't happen. Still no sign of transition. Okay. Okay, so my thermal camera is showing the board at about 160. But our hot plate is at 200. So, what do I believe? So 160 is probably not going to be, oh, hang on. We have got transition. I'm just sitting there gabbering on. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. Well. Wow. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. So that was only at 200 degrees. And we're only hit about one, well, probably peaked at about 170, between 165 and 170. Okay. I might just gently slide that off. I'm just going to get my tweezers, hold on. Still trying to do this in real time without doing too much of a cut. Well, I'll be. I'd have to take a closer look at that. So what I'll do, I'll reconfigure and we'll stick this under the microscope and I'm not gonna touch it, but let's see if I can get you focused in. Here we are, it's gonna work, yeah. Well, nearly dropped it. You can definitely see it soldered. How good it's soldered, mm. yet to be seen, but it seemed to pull in. Okay, we'll go have a closer look at this under the microscope. And uh, if this has worked first time, I'm gonna be super pleased. But anyway, uh, let's keep this in the shot, eh? Yeah, look, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna stop now and edit some video and we'll reconfigure on the uh, microscope and have a closer look. Woo! First time, sweet. Okay, as promised, we're at the scope and um, on first glance, we've got a, a couple of issues. Uh, probably my fault or the application of the solder at least. There's a couple of uh, pins down on the bottom here. This one's look a bit scarce from a solder point of view. Next door, it's got a little bit hungry and it's very hit and miss. This is probably caused by the pooling and um, basically the, the way the heat transfers through the board during that period. Some sites will get, um, let's say, pool from the next door neighbour before another one will and some will end up with more than less. So that's why it's a good idea to have uh, individual solder blobs for each of these pads because then you, you're relying on that amount of solder going to that pad only and that's probably what's happened here and there's a few that need a bit of a touch up. 
So from a mass production point of view, this is not the solution, or at least have a better way of applying a solder paste or have a better solder paste that doesn't, that's um, more viscous, I guess, and stays put even during the heat cycle. I think lessons learned, I would preheat the uh, bed, the, the hot plate to the temperature first, then put the board on it. That way you'll get um, all that heat transferring through at relatively the same time rather than, you know, bits and pieces transferring different parts of the board and you're going to get different you're going to get anomalies you're going to get different uh, heat transfer because of uh, ground planes you know, like i've got a big ground plane here and i think in the video this was the first portion that started uh, propagating from the heat point of view and it sort of went sort of that direction across the board we do have a tombstone here can't quite see it i didn't spot this during the the shooting of the video or when i did the process I only spotted in editing and I went, oh, that's novel. So you can tell this needle point just goes straight underneath. Yeah, but that could be easily fixed with the touch up with the soldering on. But yeah, I'm, I got mixed feelings. For a first attempt, it's pretty good. Put it this way, the, the, the IC's soldered and the only one I've probably got some doubt with is this puppy here. It doesn't seem like it's got any, but saying that, you can see the flux residue. By the way, I haven't cleaned anything. This is straight off the hot plate and after it's cooled down. And by the way, it's the next day because I spent I spent most of this morning editing what I've um, prior to coming to the scope. <sighs> Had a bit of a think about my process going forward. I'll just quickly put some IPA on and we'll clean up under the under the scope here. I don't hold high hopes. I've got to do some reading on that um, solder paste as well. On the eBay listing, it's there's no data sheet or anything, so I'll have to go and look up the part number. This is satisfying. I'm going to tear that pad, which I've already done. See that tombstoning? Oh, what's happening here? Oh no, it's just reflection off my finger. <laughs> I thought there was a bit of copper there. <sighs> okay. So if I tilt this board up a little bit, I'll have to refocus. Bear with me a sec. That's going vertical. So yeah, you can see the end of this leg. Um, that one there. You can see, see where it's, it's got the bare copper where the legs have been trimmed. That doesn't, that shows me that the uh, solder hasn't really taken in enough quantity to be an acceptable joint, but that's okay. Uh, this is the first attempt and I'm super pleased. Um, I don't normally do SMD manufacturing, but I'm definitely getting into doing more and more of it. This is my own branded board here. Like I said, I probably failed to explain. This is just a piggyback board for a rotary encoder. See, I thought there's a crack there, but it's not. It's just a buildup of residue or flux. That looks good. Oh no. Just like me, my toothbrush is losing hair. Oh, it's had some rough times. Yeah, so, mm. <sighs> what do you think? I would love to engage with anyone out there that's sort of doing this as a home hobby, semi-professional um, gig. Yeah, look, there's one up here. It's a bit lax, although it's got solder on it. Well, it's probably got more flux than solder, but um, yeah. I wouldn't uh, expect me getting away with no touch-ups, given that this is a, for me, it's experimental at least. 
just expanding my capabilities in the shop. But yeah, this is a long video already. I'm gonna leave it here. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys in the comment section if you are sort of in this game, at home, whatever. This is by no means a full on professional service. It's me um, expanding my capabilities in just a home shop. Although I've got a lot that I can do, I just want to expand and do that a little bit more. And this is a good way forward. Obviously there is the oven option for doing SMD boards, but I think that's okay if you're doing a whole tray of them and they're mission critical and you've got a better solder pasting technique, probably using a stencil. Um, but this current stuff that I've got, yeah, it's bloody upside down. This is the stuff anyway. It's, it's supposed to be CM tools, uh, chem tools, it is chem tools, sorry. It's even got a batch number, so I guess the quality's there. But it's just that little too, a little bit too runny. Um, yeah, even if you do put the, the right amount on, but this has been fun, a fun little experiment. And I, if you've, if you've stuck around this far, we'll see you in the next one. And I'll probably do a tear down video and we'll check out the overall quality inside the unit. But, uh, as, as far as an experiment's concerned, oh, this is a success. It just needs a little bit more, uh, honing on the technique side of things and, uh, we'll be good. Awesome. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.